I think one of the things that investors fear the most is a stock market crash. They're actually fairly predictable. And so this week I'm going to show you when one will likely happen, how far it will likely go, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. I'll do my normal analysis of the markets and then we're going to look at a trade from this past week, a stock that went up over 600% in a single day. I will show you the exact way that I found it, the points of entry, and how to know when to sell a big winning trade like that. That's all coming up in this week's Stock Scores Market Minutes. Let's begin with this discussion about a stock market crash. As I said, many investors fear these crashes, but in the reality, they just don't happen very often. In fact, the last big crash was from COVID, which happened back in 2020. And then prior to that, it was 2008, 2009, when we had the financial crisis. So the question then is, when will one happen again? Well, as I say, they're quite predictable. I'm gonna show you in just a moment on a chart when these things happen and the signal that we get. Now, we're never gonna get out at the high, but we can avoid a lot of the big move to the downside. They almost always have a catalyst. In other words, they don't just come out of the blue. The financial crisis caused a crash. You, of course, had the um, COVID epidemic that caused a crash. You had uh, the tech bubble bursting that caused a crash. And so there's always some catalyst. We can use trend lines and simple concepts to predict where a crash is going to happen and how far it is likely to fall. And I'll show you that in just a moment on some charts. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that each week I do these videos, they are free, and I will tell you when I see that. So make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, the Stock Scores YouTube channel, because I'm doing this analysis every week and I'll let you know when there is uh, bad things on the way. Crashes create opportunity. That's one thing you'll see from these charts is that some of the best opportunities come right after a crash. And you know, one of the best markets we had in the last few years was after the COVID crash, which only lasted about two months. And then we had such a great rally out of them. So we should welcome crashes because they, it's almost like a forest fire. It cleanses the forest of all the garbage. And then you get this great new growth. Same thing in the stock market. You cleanse the market of sellers of overextended stocks. And then you get this sort of redawn uh, for the market and you often get really big rallies out of that. All right, so let's take a look at some charts. And this is the first chart we're gonna look at, which is the S&P 500. This is a monthly chart going back all the way to 1997. And so here you can see uh, this most recent crash here was in 2022, not really a crash, but more of a bear market. And that was because of rising interest rates. You had the COVID crash there. You had the financial crisis back here. So you can see that over the course, and then of course you had a, the tech bubble uh, bursting there. But out of those things, good bull markets. In fact, some really great markets that we've had coming out of those crashes. Now, the question then is, how do we know when they're going to happen? Well, it's very simple actually. If you draw a trend line and that trend line gets broken, as long as you're looking at a long-term chart, either a weekly or a monthly chart, you can see the breakdowns. And they happen over and over again. Wait for the breakdown because that's the cue to get out. And you can see right now that we are in a nice strong bull market and there's no breakdown. So as of today, I would not say that we're gonna crash. That doesn't mean that won't change in a week. We could have a dramatic break of the upward trend line, but there's no sign of that now. So you stay with the market because let's face it, the stock market gives us the best long-term returns and we wanna stick with it aside from those rare events when we get a dramatic sell-off. So again, maybe we wanna sell early in 2022 and early in 2020 and of course in 2008, early in 2008. And then we had that breakdown in 2000 when the tech bubble burst. But other than that, you just stick with the market because it generates good long-term returns. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how far we're likely to crash when one happens. And it is inevitable that one will happen. The way I do that is I draw a trend line and I draw it across the bottoms. And you can see that I've essentially connected the dots. There was the low point, there was a pullback, there was a pullback, there was a pullback, and there was a pullback. So that establishes the long-term upward trend line. And we are far above that right now. So that could mean a very dramatic 
long-term pullback. However, you always want to connect the relevant pullbacks. And so we've had pullbacks here. And therefore, if we were to get a crash right now, say in the next couple of months, my expectation is the downside would be to around 450, 475 on the S&P 500. Now that's not trivial. I mean, it doesn't look like much when you look at the chart, but it's quite a sizable drop. But again, there's no sign of one happening yet. What I've done now is gone to the weekly chart of the S&P 500. And I just want to, again, emphasize what you're looking for. Uh, an abnormal move breaking the upward trend line. This is an abnormal move to the downside, breaking the upward trend line. That started weakness. This was the COVID crash, very quick, very sharp. This was the 2022 20, bear market, which was sort of slow and steady. But right now we've had little pullbacks in here, but the upward trend line is still intact. And so unless we break that, just stick with it, stick with the market. You may want to rotate. I've talked in recent weeks about how we could rotate out of some of those large cap tech stocks, the Magnificent Seven, and moving into the broader market because we are seeing that as a trend that's underway in the market. But other than that, the market still looks fine and we should stick with it. Now, let's get into my normal analysis of the market. And here is the S&P 500 as always. And we already looked at this chart. It's in a bull market. We've managed to get through the all-time highs. This is the only index that's really been able to do that. The the NASDAQ, the Russell, they're still underneath resistance. I still think we could see a little pullback here to come back to this upward trend line, but generally speaking, the market looks pretty good right now. If we look at the six month daily chart, you can see we're showing some indecision the last couple of days where we had strength, but couldn't hold the highs. And so we could see a little pullback in the short term would be quite reasonable next week for that to happen. If we look at the very short term chart, the one month chart, uh, the trend line on that is from here and just sort of cutting across those bottoms. So if we were to get a little bit of a pullback, you know, maybe 555, 550 on the S&P. Let's turn our attention to the NASDAQ 100 now. QQQ is the symbol. And there again, this is the weekly chart, but you can see that the NASDAQ is actually below the all-time highs. And that's because money has been coming out of some of those large cap tech stocks. With that said, we did break this little downward trend line. And if I were to make this a one year daily chart, it's much like the S&P in that it broke through some resistance this week. In this case though, it's a downward trend line of resistance. The NASDAQ is still gonna find longer term resistance there at 500, but generally looks okay. Although I do think um, the broader market is perhaps better than those large cap tech stocks. Moving along to the, uh, small cap market IWM and we're going to go uh, six month daily and what you can see is we've risen up to resistance this price peak hit it and started to pull back we may see that pullback continue next week down to that upward trend line wouldn't be unhealthy still a decent looking market but quite volatile quite choppy and that shows that investors are so, uh, showing some uncertainty moving along to the Canadian market T.XIU which is performing better than the US market. You can see it's a steady upward trend. A lot of that because of mining stocks are doing well. We've had gold doing well and now uranium starting to show some interest from the buyer. So that could be a place to look for opportunity. Um, but the Canadian market's still bullish. Moving along to gold itself, there you can see the gold chart went from a trend line there and getting steeper and getting steeper. So it's starting to be a little bit of a emotional chase in the gold market. We're seeing the trend get steeper and steeper, and that is dangerous, I would say. Anytime trends start to go parabolic, you're getting near the end of the trend, but there's no breakdown yet. So if you're in gold and gold mining stocks, stick with them because they're still strong, but be a little bit careful because they are getting quite risky. Let's take a look at the oil market now. USO is the chart there. And we can see a little bit of a bounce back over the last couple of weeks. This will show back up better in the short term chart. You see this little bit of strength here, but we're still underneath this resistance. We're still in this downward sloping channel. So we need to build a rising bottom and break to the upside for this market to get favorable. The three year weekly chart is OK. It's been in this trading range with a slight upward bias over time. 
we might get back up into here in the months ahead, but I don't really see an exciting market for oil. Let's look at the currencies. We'll look at the US dollar first. I'm gonna make this a short-term chart. And you can see that we've generally been going down and that's because falling interest rates in the US make the US dollar less desirable. So you're seeing a little bit of selling pressure there. I would say it's generally a neutral chart, but short term, a little bit weak. How about Bitcoin? Bitcoin in the long term, I don't like the fact that there are these falling tops here. That's a sign of pessimism. Remember I said at the top of the video that price will pull back to the trend line, the linear trend line, and that the S&P is quite far above it. Same thing with the uh, Bitcoin market. It really went parabolic here. And now we're grinding our way back to that upward trend line. I think it's going to take time before Bitcoin really starts to do well. Last chart I'm going to look at is TLT, which is the Treasury Bond ETF. Um, a little bit of a pullback this week, late in the week, on the announcement from the Fed that they were lowering rates a half a point. So we got that little bit of a pullback and I had a few questions about that this week, but I actually think it's still healthy. And the reason is here's our upward trend line and whether you draw it there or there, you don't have much downside until we should bounce. If we look at the daily chart on the TLT, it's even more apparent that we are still in an upward trend. We've pulled back to the trend line. We should bounce back and maybe go this way, but ultimately headed lower. The expectation is that the US Fed will continue to lower rates. The bond market tends to predict that. We got that half a point cut, probably gonna get another cut in six weeks. So my ratings then, bullish on both timeframes for US large cap, neutral on NASDAQ and US small cap on both timeframes. Canadian stocks, kind of like gold, bullish on both timeframes. Oil, neutral, uh, starting to get better, but still need of work. Uh, US dollar, bearish in the short term, neutral long term, kind of the opposite for Bitcoin, neutral short term, it's trying to bounce back, but still long term bearish, and then bullish on both time frames for bonds. Now, before we get to the trade of the week, I'm going to show you a stock that went up 600% in just a single day and how to trade that. But I just want to remind you that I also have a website, stockscores.com. And I have a weekly newsletter that comes out with my trading tactics, with some stock picks. It's free. Just go to stockscores.com and right here where it says see more, you can register for that. We also have some upcoming events which you can check out at the bottom of the page. And if you want to see the stock scores on any stock that you're interested in, North American stocks, you can see that here. Um, Microsoft, the 51. All right, let's get into the trade of the week then. How did I trade it? How did I know to trade it? couple of things. Number one, this stock does not have many shares outstanding in the public's hands. It's a low float stock. Any stock with under say 20 million shares available to trade is something we consider low float. And that means that there's less supply of stock. So when you have a lot of people that want to own it, these kinds of stocks can make big moves. So this is the first lesson. If you want to trade those stocks that have big potential, focus on low float. However, Low float stocks are often very illiquid. In other words, they don't trade very actively. And so I have no interest in a low float stock unless it trades abnormal volume. If you look at this stock here on screen, GLMD, you can see that the volume was very abnormal. Um, it was a few days ago now, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday that it made this move. And that was the key thing that got me interested. Now, I noticed this stock before the market opened. So in the pre-market trading session, it was trading strong volume and it was up quite significantly from the previous day. So that was the first clue. It's abnormal price action, strong liquidity, and a large float, or sorry, a small float. So then what I do is I look for my action candles to trigger. Now an action candle is my own indicator. It's something available to my members of Stock Scores, active trader members. You can learn more about that at my website as well. And with active trader, what we do is we scan the entire market looking for action candles, which essentially is a statistically significant abnormal price move to the upside with statistically significant abnormal volume. I let the computer tell me what stocks to watch. I don't want to use my human bias. I let the computer put these stocks in front of me. We have these things running on the entire U.S. stock market during the day. And in this case, GLMD made its first action candle right there at the open of trade on, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday actually. 
uh, big, you see the yellow dot and the pink dot. Now it doesn't show up here very well because the scale is so skewed given how much the stock ran. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in on that a little bit for you. This is the pre-market session on the 17th. This is the opening bar on the 17th when the normal trading session started. And what catches my eye is the fact that there is an action candle there. There's abnormal volume, abnormal price action, and the stock was already in play. It had been trading actively in the pre-market and it had a low flow. So that's your first entry point. Okay, you're getting an abnormal break from low volatility. The next one is this action candle right here, because one of the things I like to do is I either like to buy stocks that break from sideways trading, which is what this is, or when they go up a little bit, when, wait for the pullback and then buy the break of the pullback. And that's what that is right there. So that was at $8. This was at just under $6. And it actually started the previous day at $3. That's why we ended up seeing this huge move on the stock and it ultimately hit $24. You can see it right there. Now the question then is, of course, when do you sell these things? Well, we can go back to those concepts that we talked at the top of, of the video with S&P 500 ETF SPY. What I like to see is linear trend line, as long as it holds the linear trend line, we can stick with it. If the trend starts to go parabolic, I'll show you this in just a moment, then we get much more aggressive. So let's jump back to the chart of GLMD. And here is the linear trend line. Okay, all I've done is I've just connected the dots. That's your straight line. Then it gets steeper. Okay, so now that support, that line of support. And then it goes parabolic. When you get the parabolic move, what's really happening is short sellers are scrambling to cover their position. Um, emotional traders are chasing the stock higher, willing to pay any price. The FOMO, the fear of missing out really kicks in. And that's what causes this parabolic trend. As soon as I see a parabolic trend, I get much more aggressive on the exit and just start using the floors based on the tall candles. And so when it broke that tall candle low right there, it was about $20, that was the exit. Now remember, the original entry on this trade was at around six, the previous day it had been at three, and then we had a second entry at $8, so really nice profit uh, on this stock because it's low float, abnormal, and very liquid, and that's kind of the essentials. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's Market Minutes. Uh, if so, click on the like button, leave a comment. Do you think the market is ripe for a crash? Or are we still gonna be good for a while? And uh, subscribe to the channel, it's free. And I do these videos on the regular every week, plus other videos during the week. If you're subscribed, then you will see those much more likely. All right, hope you've enjoyed it and trade well.